I apparently don't know how to do videos that aren't about books. Hey, Cyclone! Hi, it's Kira, aka the biggest Melvester shipper in the entire world. Ari, you can come and fight me on this. It's just, it's just a fact. And we're in front of the books even though this is not a book related video because this is the Scorpion fan interview video. So let's get started. Question number one. Who is your favorite character and why? It is impossible for me to pick between Sylvester, Dodd, and Happy Quinn because they are both so important not just to me but to television in general. Sylvester is my one true soulmate. He is my missing half. We would complete each other so well. I'm just so thankful that there's a character like him on TV and he is the one fictional character that I am in way too deep for. But then there's Happy, who is everything I want to be. She can take care of herself, she sticks up for her friends, and she doesn't take any shit. I feel like I'm far away from you guys. Come closer. Come closer. Come cl Not that close. Okay. She was the one girl on this team of guys for so long and she's probably the most competent of all of them. She took her life into her own hands and learned to protect herself by putting walls up, but she also is so sensitive and girly. She loves her people so fiercely and she forgave her dad and just everything about Happy Quinn is amazing. <laughs> but then again, you know I love all of the characters except Walter. No, I love Walter. I do. I love, I love them all. But Sylvester and Happy are everything. They are my everything. Just, they're yeah. Let's go on. What's your favorite episode and why? Talismans. Don't even need to think about that. It has everything that I love about this show. Megan gets introduced to the team so we get to see Sylvester experiencing love at first sight. And this episode is the first time that all of the ships get airtime together in one episode. Happy lets Toby take care of her and then she kicks up a shotgun into her hands with her like sprained ankle and I'm like Jesus Christ Happy. What? What? Walter learns to respect James which is one of my favorite things about the show is that like each side of the coin you have like the the smart people and then you have like the blue collar workers and they like learn to respect each other. I love it. And Paige's sarcastic comment saves the day. It's great. And of course we get we get major backstory. Like not only do I just love like Megan and Sylvester talking and just being together, but he gives her so much backstory about like the team and it was just a very huge part. I I, I love backstory. And of course my favorite part is that Walter understands Sylvester's anxiety and lets him stay behind and take care of his sister and they bond over their disabilities and it's so important. I've probably seen it around 30 times. In fact, there was a day when I watched it four times in one day. I have a problem. <laughs> what is your favorite ship and why? <laughs> Y'all know who I am on the Tumblr, right? Yeah. Um, my favorite ship is Melvester. That is because they just clicked so well. They just have so much in common and it's not just their separate disabilities that they bond over but also they're just both literal rays of sunshine and they have the primal need to help people and of course they both love Walter O'Brien so much and they're both just silly and it's really refreshing to see just like this pure silly love on TV. But then on the other hand this is the ship that is going to kill me. It is going to tear out my heart and just destroy me. Because as I have said so many times Sylvester has lived his life so scared of death and Megan has fully embraced it at this point. Megan has lived so fully because she knew that her life was going to be cut short and Sylvester has only just started to live now that he's met her. It's it's honestly just heartbreaking and terrible and I don't know how I'm gonna handle it. <laughs> but then as all of you guys know my secondary ship is Quintus with all of my heart. It It's just the 
the type of ship that I'm all about. This Melvester thing is kind of new to me, like just this this pure, simple, fun love story. And then you got Quintus, who the best friends falling in love, and one's a grumpy grump, and one's like this bouncy puppy who's snarky as hell, and just, they're, they're my typical ship. They're what I go for. And so obviously I am all about Happy and Toby. And then yeah, Wage, you know, whatevs. <laughs> But then I also, I also ship everyone. <laughs> I made, I literally made a list of all of my scorpion ships and it's everyone who could ever exist legally. I, I don't ship that creepy stuff, yo. I apologize to anyone who I've made ship something ridiculous, like homeschool dads. Do you have any theories about what specifically they're going to find out in Cliffhanger that causes all the drama. In terms of Walter and Cabe, I am terrified that two things might happen. One of which is Cabe knowing what they were going to use Walter's program or invention for before asking Walter. Because we know, because we think now that he had no idea what the program was going to be used for, but I'm scared that he did. The second option, which I don't think is going to happen now that I've seen the promo, is that it was all actually all Walter's fault. That he fucked up his invention so bad that it either blew up and they weren't actually dropping bombs, it was just Walter, <laughs> it was just Walter's program malfunctioning, or that it like the bombs didn't drop where they thought it was going to be killing a bunch of civilians instead of what they wanted they wanted it to just go to like the bad guys and not kill a bunch of civilians. But now that we've seen the promo and Walter yelling at Cabe, I think it is that Cabe knew ahead of time that they were going to drop bombs. What character do you relate to the most? This will surprise no one. It is Sylvester Dodd, 100%. I'm gonna get teary-eyed talking about how much I relate to him. I know it's gonna happen, so please excuse that. It's not just that Sylvester has anxiety and I have anxiety, because we, while we have some of the same phobias, our anxieties are very much different. His is much more general, um, he is GAD, and I have more social anxiety because he can like pick up the phone and be like, hello, this is Scorpion, and like go on his merry little way, but like I, I can't do that. It's, it's so much more than just the anxiety and OCD and phobias. It's that his parents didn't understand and that he came from a very abusive household, that he can't drive because of his anxiety, and that he has way too much EQ, and that he has obvious physical quirks and symptoms. Um, he uses fiction as an escape, or at least that's what I get from his um, obsession with comic books and super fun guy. It's that his anxiety impacted his life so much that he was considering bad things. And all of that is me. When I heard Sylvester's backstory in Talismans, which is one of the reasons I love Talisman so much, I was sobbing because that, that was me. Like a hundred percent, we are the same person. I am just so thankful that I get to see him on my TV in a semi-regular basis because his character just shows me that if, if Sylvester can do this stuff, if he can find his people, if he can do all of these things that he's doing, then so can I. If Drew remains permanently in Portland, do you think we will see more or less of Ralph in season two? Less, I hope. I hope that he visits his dad because I, I'm like 100% sure they're gonna stay. They're gonna stay in LA, Paige and Ralph. And so I hope that Ralph will go see his dad. I love Ralph. I want to see more of Ralph in season two. But if we're thinking what is best for Ralph as if he was like a real person and not a television character, 
I would want him to go be with his dad on a semi-regular basis. We've seen that being around his dad makes Ralph much more open and happy. I hope that we we hear from Paige that, oh, where's Ralph? Oh, he's with his dad this weekend. Like, I hope that's a thing that'll happen. What exactly do you think of Drew? <laughs> Okay, I think that ditching your kid for eight years is a really, really shitty thing to do, but nothing that he's done on screen has warranted the amount of hate that he gets from not only the audience, from us, but also from the characters on the show, like Toby. I have so many thoughts about Toby's relation to Drew and how they interact, because Toby just has this idea of what Drew is in his head because of the way Toby grew up and that he got bullied by these sports jocks or manly men who get the cheerleaders. Like, Toby is constantly pulling out these high school metaphors and that's Toby's problem. I really like what Drew is currently trying to do. In fact, I really want Drew to stick around. I don't want him to go to Portland. I want him to join the team. <laughs> Mostly for Ralph, but I would also like Cabe to like teach someone how to shoot a gun, and I feel like Drew has the most eye-hand coordination. I want him to become like their bodyguard. <laughs> you you can't just like hate Drew. I don't I don't understand that because look at Ralph's face at the end of Crossroads. We have never seen him that happy. We have never seen him laugh that hard and I just I really like that Drew is trying to be a dad and that Ralph is really responding to that. How long do you think it'll take Happy to forgive Toby? Do you think in order to be forgiven, Toby will have to prove himself again. I think that Happy will want everything to go back to normal as soon as possible. Yeah, she will bring up the botched date. She will give him crap about it for the rest of their lives, but soon I think she's gonna start to do it in jest instead of out of this place of anger. And sure, with that joking, there will be an undercurrent of we should never do this again. Let's get over each other right now and go back to the way things were. This was a horrible idea. And she'll like use that as like a warning to him to drop the serious flirting and go back to their fake flirting like before. She just wants to be friends again. And I think that will happen around the finale. If Quintus is ever gonna be a thing again, then Toby does need to prove himself, but more emotionally this time. He needs to drop everything he knows about dating, the flowers and the fancy dates, and get more happy friendly. He knows her, he just has to prove that he knows her. Which not blood related father son dynamic do you prefer, Cave Walter or Walter Ralph? Let me just say one thing about this question. <laughs> Nicole, I love you, but um, I prefer Walter and Sylvester. I know everyone's like, oh, they're brothers, but like, I love the thought of it just being Walter and Sylvester, like, in like a crappy one bedroom apartment. Oh, sorry, I hit you. Um, Walter, just like this 20 something dude raising a 16 year old and like, I don't know, that's just my favorite dynamic, I think, is between Sylvester and Walter. But okay, going back to the actual question, my favorite is Cabe and Walter. It's just so nice to see two adult men having this kind of love between them. And other than whatever Cabe is hiding, which is gonna throw all of the dynamics off, they just seem to have this healthy, stable dynamic that we got to see grow from the broken pieces of their past. Hopefully once Walter gets over his anger about whatever Cape is hiding, they can do that again. Hopefully it won't take so long this time, but we've seen them put the pieces back together. Walter Cabe! Do they have a, like, bro TP chip name? I think they should. I'm, I'm not gonna name it because last time I named a ship I didn't actually mean to name it. I was just messing around and you guys took it and you ran with it and I still can't believe that happened. Okay I don't want my camera to die so I'm gonna plug this in. I do this for a living and apparently I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. Okay I'm gonna move you guys. Oh no. <laughs> 
I'm a professional. Okay, um, I'm gonna plug this in. Come on. What if I run out of space on the card? That would suck. Come on. Come on. We can do it. No! I swear to God I'm a professional. I don't think you guys really care about that. I don't think you care about unflattering angles because you accept me the way I am in all of the unflattering light and angles. So we're just gonna continue right on our merry little way. What sort of things would you like to see happen in season two? Oh boy. There is so much I want to see in season two, but just some of it. I want Megan and Sylvester to just start having a bunch of adventures under the guise of like getting Sly out of his shell and like going and taking risks, but really it's Megan going through her bucket list of all the things she wants to do before she dies. I know that's really sad, but like this also includes marriage. Maybe there could be some like subplot about Sylvester's age and everyone else is like, I don't think you should do this. And he's like, no man, I know when a thing is right. And like, <laughs> He's just really aggressive about his love for Megan and like everyone's like dude you're 22 and he's like I don't care <laughs> I want the season finale of season two to be just Walter and Paige having an actual conversation about what they both want and would expect out of a relationship because I don't really want wage to happen before then I think like, season two needs to be them realizing that they have feelings for each other, but, like, not acting on it. And then the finale of season two can be like, hey, maybe this is a thing we could do. We should probably talk about it. I want another female team member so bad, and I'll get to that later. Um, I want queer representation like nobody's business. I want it so much like i will continue to like ship all of the fem slash ships until we get some actual real life gay people on this goddamn show i want happy to be happy that's what i want out of season two i want happy to just be happy as she's ever been in her entire life i want mark collins to be redeemed i want it I know y'all want him to like pop up and be like this annoying evil person, but like I want him to be redeemed so bad. Give me the goddamn origin episode. Y'all have been teasing it since the beginning of the show. I want to see Walter and Sylvester's relationship in the origin episode. I want more Happy and Paige. I want a girls' night adventure. Um you know what I just realized? <laughs> this is so dumb, but like, I want Happy and Toby to get married while Megan is still alive so they can have a bachelorette party. I need a bachelorette party, okay? Okay. I want more Ralph, even though I said I would be okay with less Ralph, but I want more Ralph. He is the reason the show exists. So let's get some more Ralph up in here. I just, I want so many things, so many things, but mainly queer representation, um, the origin episode, I want happy to be happy, more Melvester in my life, of course. I say the origin episode already, because yeah, more Ralph. Those are the things that I want. Who is your favorite guest star? My automatic answer is that Ginger was amazing as Maya in Crossroads because one, I love Ginger, and <laughs> did you see all of her vines from the set? It was so great. And I loved Maya as a character. I just, I need her to come back, even though I know it's obviously not the safest option. <laughs> Imagine the hijinks that Scorpion would get into with a snarky pregnant genius. He would go to the ends of the earth to protect her, and Toby would be so 
obnoxious about her health, and for once Paige could give some unsolicited parenting advice <laughs> instead of everyone giving it to her. But I also love Mark Collins, of course. I think the way that Walter handled Mark was kind of shitty. I have gone into this multiple times. <laughs> But then my my actual favorite villain, other than Hair Bun Guy, who is no longer with us, rest in peace Man Bun Guy. My favorite villain, other than him, was Seema. I want her to come back. I love her. I feel like she's kind of a genius. And then I love Beast and Peyton Temple. He's just a really cool kid. I like him a lot. I want Peyton to come back after Quintus has become a thing and are very established, and I want... I don't know, I kind of want to see like more jealous Toby and Happy being like, dude, no, I'm with you. I didn't even go on a date with him. Jesus Christ, Toby. Bonus questions. What is your favorite thing about the fandom? That we're so desperate for material that I can post really crappy jokes that no one but me thinks is funny or really crappy graphics and they still get notes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Y'all actually think I'm funny. That's amazing. That's a first. I don't know what that says about you guys, but you know. You know, I love that I could just set up a chat room and post the link and even if I've never talked to you before, you just come in and start talking and that's just so nice. Like now we're on a first name basis with each other. I have so much anxiety about talking to anyone, even online, especially online, but I've never really felt that with the Scorpion fandom. I feel like I can just go into anyone at anyone's ass box and be like, hey, what do you think about this? I can't believe I just feel comfortable enough to do that, but that's so cool. I guess it's just the general feeling of it that makes me feel comfortable around you guys, I guess, because everyone's just so excited and passionate about the show that they are willing to talk to anyone about it because we're so desperate for content. No, I'm kidding, but like, we'll honestly just talk to anyone who likes the show and be like, what do you think about this? And you're never scared of being rejected, I guess, because we're all just so passionate about this silly little show. I haven't felt this accepted anywhere let alone a fandom in a really long time. Everything about me is accepted here, which is so crazy. <laughs> like my weird unnecessary presence and my weird unnecessary content is not only accepted here, but it's encouraged, which once again, I don't know what that says about you lot. Like my OT3s and my way too long ship names are just accepted and ran with. Like, I'm looking at you, Zoe or Zoe, I'm sorry, I'm bad with names and pronunciation, but, um, and everyone else who made homeschool dads an actual thing. Y'all are cray. I love you. I love you all. I think it helps that our show is about neurodivergent misfits and other minorities because a lot of you understand like the really intense meta I write about their backstories because you too have that lived experience. You relate to the characters as much as I relate to Sylvester. You're so accepting because that's what Scorpion is about. It's about finding your people and your safe haven, but it's also about accepting those who are different from you like the evolution of Paige and Toby's relationship. It's about overcoming those differences, whether you have high IQ, uh, low IQ, high EQ, low EQ, no EQ, it's about coming together and using your own strengths to create something, to create all this content that we've made about this silly little show. It's about creating the fan fiction and the graphics and the gifs and all of those things and also this community, this cyclone, that's amazing. Like I'm so glad that it is this show that I decided to get obsessed with. But let's be honest, it wasn't a decision. <laughs> because the fans are so amazing, because this show is so smart and 
has so much diversity and representation that the people who have become obsessed with it are smart and accepting and witty and creative and just amazing. It's, it's great. Y'all are great. Everything's great. Except the promo for Cliffhanger. That's less than great. Everything else is great. Okay, I will see you guys on Tumblr. See you later. Bye!